Hello and welcome everyone to Gold Asset of the Day for the 13th of August, presented by myself, Phil Carr, at the Gold and Silver Club. So first of all, what do you need to know for the week ahead? We've seen a significant breakout in the latest week. In fact, gold prices now, they're up 17% so far in 2019. And last week we saw a breakout of over 4% to the upside. Yet again, we have seen a significant increase in positions from hedge funds and money managers in the latest week. We've also been capitalizing on the latest breakouts here, re-entering positions even just yesterday at 1,491 US dollars per ounce and 1,495, banking 640 points profit in just over the last 24 hours. I do hope a lot of you have capitalized on the recent breakouts. We certainly had a, a lot of contacts and messages from those of you that caught the breakout the previous week, following on from the FOMC statement where we had banked over 700 points on our first trade and 800 points on the second trade. So at the moment, we continue to see very shallow retracements on gold, which are providing these great buy opportunities. So for this week, we are looking at a range, again, a shallow retracement here from the beginning of the week. We opened just under 1,500 US dollars per ounce, we're finding support around 1487 to 1490 at the moment, the beginning of the week. And we've tapped up to that level of resistance that we've discussed previously, which is around the 1525 to 1530 zone of resistance. Within the projected ranges for this week, we are actually within the upper range right now. So where we're poised at 1,400 and around 26 US dollars per ounce, you want to watch here to see whether we're going to be able to break and close above 1425. That's a very important level now for gold. Just yesterday, we broke and closed above 1,500 US dollars per ounce. What we're seeing at the moment is again, gold is getting the safe haven bid. We're also, of course, in a seasonally, a bullish time of year for gold, which we've mentioned time and time again. The month of August is typically very strong for gold, but further compounding that at the moment is the escalation in geopolitical tension. You have at the moment the escalation in Hong Kong right now. The Hong Kong airport was closed yesterday. It's one of the biggest cargo airports in the world. And we also saw a crash in the Argentine and peso yesterday as well. And all of these are having significant impact on gold. We're seeing big inflows into the precious metals market. But more specifically, the gold market at the moment is the strongest play and where you really want to be looking for these opportunities at the moment. Now we do have going into next week, one major news item that you want to be aware of, which is going to be the Federal Reserve symposium. The annual symposium is going to be next week. At the moment, traders are anticipating a 75% chance that at the September FOMC statement, we're going to see another cut by the Federal Reserve of a quarter percent. So we want to watch out for the narratives next week from uh, the Federal Reserve annual symposium. We'll be watching that very closely. This week has already been very lucrative for us. Just within the last 24 hours, as I've mentioned, we've seen a breakout from 490, 495, all the way up to 400, 1,500, and 32 US dollars per ounce. And we're still right around the upper range at the moment. If we don't see much of a retracement here, naturally the next levels where you'll be looking for magnetic zones of resistance, if we do break and close and manage to build up momentum above 1525, is going to be 1550. We mentioned during our Q&A last week that we were looking for a tap of 1,500 US dollars per ounce. We banked one of our positions last week for 800 points at 1,506 US dollars per ounce. And then we bought back in this week with two positions, one off the Sunday open at 1495 and another one just yesterday at 1491 and then banking 75% of our profits now with over a 640 point breakout between those two trades over the last 24 hours. But we are keeping some of our position running here in case we do get a further breakout back towards that 1550 level. That's what we're looking at now. So you really want to keep a very close eye on the narratives in the market at the moment. Also, the trade war tensions between the US and China has been a catalyst. Central banks at the moment with the cutting of interest rates, this is all having a positive impact for gold and of course, currency devaluation that we're seeing at the moment. More specifically in the last week, Chinese Yuan and now the Argentinian peso and escalation in geopolitical risk here in Hong Kong at the moment. This is all providing a prime catalyst for safe haven bids to move into gold. So I do hope that you're able to capitalize on these moves at the moment. So with that, that has been gold asset of the day. And of course, I wish you good trading.
Hello and welcome everybody to today's Q&A section of today's analysis. We have several questions again this week, so thank you very much to Simone, Matt Zola, Kenny and also Joe as well for your question on silver. Just actually a follow-up from last week's question on silver where we covered the gold to silver ratio in detail and that silver was very much overdue catching up to the breakouts that we've seen on gold recently. So if you look back at the price action of gold lately, we've broken out to six year highs. It's the highest level since April of 2013. Silver is still only trading at one year highs at the moment. If you were to break out to the six year highs with silver, that would actually position silver much closer towards 20 US dollars per ounce. We also covered last week in detail where the gold to silver ratio, which typically historically tends to be between that 55 to 65 to one ratio had got far too overbought. It hit over 93 to one over the month of July, the highest level in over 20 years. And we're starting to see the gold silver ratio correct now, which is suggesting that silver needs to catch up to gold prices. In fact, we've seen another breakout so far this week. Now, above $17 per ounce. We've tapped $17.50, another magnetic level. If we do continue to see this breakout and follow through on gold, we would then expect silver, the next major level of resistance, to be $18 per ounce. And eventually, over the course of the next few months, getting all the way back up towards $20 US dollars. If we continue to see this acceleration in gold prices to the upside, silver could then go parabolic. And that's where we would be looking for the price action to catch up. In fact, historically, whenever we do see these significant breakouts on gold, there is some lag time for silver, but silver does always eventually catch up. So absolutely have silver on your radar. We have had a significant move since we discussed it last week where we were trading around $16.50 we've already moved over a dollar to the upside in the latest week. So again, thanks very much for your question, Joe. Now going over to Simone's question. So this is with respect to gold at the moment and what we can expect here as the next potential major levels of resistance as we continue throughout the month of August. So as we mentioned on gold asset of the day, typically the month of August is very strong for gold prices. From a seasonal point of view, we do tend to see both January February and August are the strongest months of the year for gold. We also have the backdrop at the moment of gold getting the safe haven bid as a result of geopolitical risk that we're seeing at the moment, the escalation in Hong Kong right now. We've seen Hong Kong airport was just shut yesterday off the back of demonstrations and protesters there. Hong Kong, of course, being one of the world's largest cargo shipping airports. We've also seen the Argentinian peso crash just yesterday, very significant move over a 19% decline in the Argentinian peso, which again has seen safe haven bid for gold. So all of these factors right now are driving gold prices higher. We broke out to $1,500 last week, which we discussed being the next major level of resistance. Then you'd be looking at 1525, which we've already hit today. If we were to close above 1,525 US dollars, even today or later on this week, we would then start to propel higher up to the next major level of resistance, which would be the 1550 level. That's the next zone I would look out for. We've actually hit some very significant milestones already this week with gold. We're breaking out to 1525. It's springboarding off that $1,500 level, very shallow retracements, which we've continued to capitalize on, which then brings me over to Kenny's question. And Kenny's question relates to banking profits too early on a position, moving up the stop loss too early and not being able to capitalize on the whole move. And also where you've not cashed out at the right time as well, Kenny. So going back to your question where you found previously that you may have been staying with a very profitable position, but then you've just waited too long to come out of the trade only to see that position retrace. So there are some ways to mitigate this. So one of those being to take partial profit. So as the price is breaking out to the upside in your direction, rather than come out of the trade entirely or only looking to move your stop loss to entry price, you actually bank profits as you go. It's certainly possible for you within your trading platform to bank partial profits. And then as the price continues to break out, you have capitalized and banked some profits. You still have the ability to catch more upside and you can also protect your trade as well. So Kenny, that's the ultimate way to really capitalize on these breakouts is by taking partial profits as the price actually is breaking out in your direction. So you're locking in some profits, you're leaving more upside potential, but you're also protecting the trade as well, rather than just bank the whole trade prematurely or wait too long and then miss out on the gains while the price 
continuing to retrace against you. So that's definitely something which would help you with your trading, Kenny. And thank you very much for the question. And finally, going back to Matt Zola's question, which is with respect to where we see gold price action going this week, I would definitely encourage you to watch our latest update, which is gold asset of the day. But essentially for this week, we've capitalized right off the Sunday open through to Monday by buying in on these pullbacks, very shallow pullbacks on gold, buying in at 1491 and at 1495. So under the 1500 zone or around that, major magnetic level now would be perceived as a buy opportunity. At the moment, we're right at the upper end of the range. This is a level where we've now taken some profits off the table as we've been finding some resistance between 1525 to 1530, but we are also leaving some of our position on for the potential of further upside. If we do see a more significant breakout later on this week, if we start to make a move up to 1,550 US dollars per ounce. So that's what we're looking at over the course of this week. As I mentioned, we've already banked 640 points profit in the last 24 hours. And I congratulate all of you who've also capitalized on the latest breakouts. And if you haven't done so already, of course, make sure you're also following us on YouTube as well. Thank <laughs> you.